you had to be a court. It was where everything happened. It, you know, courts were moving, traveling cities. You know, if you weren't in court, you just didn't exist. You were a peasant. You lived in the countryside. You know, you can see all these, all these dukes <clears throat> and all these earls, and they're all at court, and they all had apartments within the court, or used to rent little townhouses around the palace. They had beautiful estates, some of them matching Henry's, out in the countryside, but never got there. Because if you were out at your estate, you were either banished, ill, um, or nobody wanted to see you. Or you were out of favor with the king, which is the worst thing to be. So everything revolved around the king. So, in, yeah, is Henry the, was Henry like a rock star? Of course he was like a rock star. We, we throw sort of like rock stars, movie stars up there, and we treat them like gods in the same way as, you know, Henry was treated. Wherever they are, that's where the party is. I think Moore knew Henry when he was very, very young, when he was a young boy. Possibly tutored him, maybe. You know, I'm not so sure if he did or not. But he would have, Henry would have looked up to Moore as a kind of an older brother figure that he didn't have. He was a man who was learned. His piety was never in question. He was, uh, he was, his, his sense of, his own sense of morals were correct. His, his own sense of propriety was, was, was there. Um, and Henry admired him. He admired Moore. Moore was all the good in the world in many ways. But be careful in thinking that's all Moore is because Moore's got his own demons. Um, any man who finds he has to exist in that depth of piety is frightened of something or has, has, is fighting something. Whereas Wolsey is totally different without scruples. Wolsey is corrupt, so Henry doesn't have to be. Wolsey gets great wealth. He builds Oxford. His great swan song is building Oxford, and it's quite a swan song. Um, he was incredibly wealthy. He had a lot of power. He had a mistress. Um, I think he fathered two children. Now, I might be incorrect, but I think he did. Um, and he, 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 made him, he made a mistake. Uh, he made a mistake, and his mistake was not, not getting Henry the divorce, but promising Henry something that he couldn't give to him. Henry had no choice but get rid of Wolsey. Wolsey backed himself into a corner, um, which he couldn't get out of. Um, and when he, Henry was not granted the divorce by Rome, uh, once he failed him, where he had promised him. Uh, but extraordinarily enough, very close to Wolsey's death, um, Henry met him. And he was at a banquet. And Henry walked him over to the window. And the last time they were seen together, they were seen laughing and joking with each other, like old friends. You know, so they had that element. He's very close to Wolsey as well, very close, and admires him. You know, he, he doesn't refer to him in the same blackguard manner, I suppose, as, you know, Richard Burton um, and Anthony Quayle, their relationship. Uh, myself and Sam's is totally different. Richard Burton had this thing, of he was always calling him vicar of hell mm. and uh, illuminating his corruption. Whereas I play it differently and illuminate his piety whilst knowing he's corrupt. Um, I, Henry's no fool. He knows what that Wolsey, what Wolsey does is, um, is not kosher. You don't cross the king because even if he doesn't want to punish you, he has to because you made him look a fool. And a king cannot look a fool. There was, I think it was Henry's, Henry had a, like a, a fool, a jester, or a groom that used to lie across his doorway, like uh, like those snakes, so the, so the wind doesn't come in. And Henry was in bed one night, and you know, he's in his room, and he's on his own, and, and he's trying to figure something out, and he can't get it. And the jester turns to him and says, you know, which, my lord, would you rather be, the king of fools or the fool of kings? 
And Henry realizes that even if you really love somebody, including his sister, and they try to hurt you, you have to cut their heads off. They have to be gone. They have to be banished. Even if it breaks your heart to do it. Even when he executes more. Or executes Anne Boleyn. Or Catherine. Being thrown in the tower. You know, or Buckingham. Although he secretly enjoyed Buckingham. But, you know, you sometimes you have to kill the thing you love for your own survival. And that's another very, very hard thing that people in these days... We don't we don't really realize that you know imagine imagine you know growing up I suppose there's some that do someone like you know Prince William or Prince Harry mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's like it's, you know I always read stories about Harry in the newspaper he's out he's getting drunk he's kissing girls he's falling out of nightclubs at five o'clock in the morning well so he's doing the same thing as every 22 or 23 year old kid out there is doing unfortunately though. He can't because he's not a normal human being. He's a he's um, a, a demigod because he's a royal. But in that's in in this day, when you can imagine what it was like five hundred years ago, you are a god. I mean, if you told peasants in the field that you walked on water, they believe you. So you know that's a there's a lot of power to have, but it does restrict restrict you. It's kind of like it's it's like putting all this energy in a little ball, and sometimes that ball is going to bounce very hard against something. You know what I mean? And he does. He bounces hard against Anne Boleyn. 